Hi, and welcome to the Restorative Wellness Clinician's Corner, a video series exclusively for functional health professionals, where we interview the top experts in the latest research, products, tools, and best practices for getting your clients exceptional results. Everybody, welcome. This is a very special episode of the RWS Clinician's Corner. We have the one and only Dr. Megan Walker with us today. And I'm super excited to introduce you to her. She describes herself as an anthropologist and recovering naturopathic doctor obsessed with the intersection between health, high performance, and entrepreneurship. So she was a highly successful practitioner who stepped away from private practice to coach other clinician entrepreneurs and business owners in this space of health and wellness to create the impact and income that aligns with their purpose. She is a podcast host of the Impact Podcast, um, the author of Impact Medicine, program creator, business builder, and perhaps most impressive, she balances all of these things beautifully alongside raising her three amazing daughters and really prioritizing her family and balance, which I think is incredible. So just some highlights of what she has done. She founded and sold her first business by the age of 21. So she's been doing this for a minute. She's practiced for 12 years as an naturopathic doctor. She's built multiple seven-figure businesses. Um, she is the chief cheerleader of Clinician Business Labs, host of the Impact with Megan Walker podcast, which I had the great privilege to be on. Um, she is the CEO and co-founder of Health Hives, the host and founder of Impact Lives. I will tell you, I first met Megan in 2020 through JJ Virgin's Mindshare community, and I have been so incredibly impressed from my very first interaction with her at how she is able to explain really complicated business concepts in a way that just, it just makes sense when she explains things. So I encourage you, I've got my notebook out and my pen. I'm going to be taking copious notes. I encourage you to do the same. Um, as it turns out, we went to the same high school, which I think is really cool. Although we didn't, we didn't know each other then. Um, I was a few years ahead of her, um, <laughs> as you can tell by the hair. Um, but um, she's just one of my favorite people. We're so lucky to be with her this afternoon and this evening. Um, with that, I turn it over to you, Megan. Oh, Margaret, thank you so much. I'm really, I'm honored and delighted to be here and have the opportunity to uh, chat and hang out with your community. I am not going to lie. I'm having massive regrets that this is happening in webinar format and not in a meeting because actually one of the things I love is being able to see people's faces. And so uh, one thing I'll just ask all of you, and I would really love for this to be an interactive um, presentation or workshop or conversation is let's really leverage the chat. Let's, I'm going to ask you questions. The more you can engage in the chat, the more fun it is, uh, for me, uh, I get a sense of where you're at. So I'm going to fully leverage that piece. And so my first question to all of you, this is always my favorite thing because it still astounds me. It astonishes me on the internet where everybody's from. Can everyone just throw down where you are coming from this afternoon, evening? I'd love okay, San Jose. I love this. So happy to be here. This is great. Love it. Oh gosh, we are like all over the place. I'm so I'm coming to you live from Toronto. Oh yeah, we've got another Toronto person. Amazing. We're gearing up over here. We've got a um the Canadian women's soccer team is playing Jamaica tonight and says do or die to make it to the Olympics. So that's <laughs> where I'm uh that's where I'm off to next, but the whole city is like buzzing uh, as a result of this. This is really exciting, everybody. So thank you. Um, what we're gonna talk about today is something called uh impact medicine. And impact medicine is a system of of medicine that I've described that really speaks to the way we can deliver and deploy care on the opposite side of something I call the line of fine. And I want everyone to understand what the line of fine is before we get into this presentation today, because it is the opportunity of a lifetime for all of us. The line of fine is where literally millions of people every single day are deposited 
by the traditional healthcare system. What happens is, is they go in to see their doctors or their physicians and they're like, I'm exhausted, I'm tired. And they say, don't worry, I've looked at your blood work. You are totally fine. It's the cancer patients who go through treatment and they finish their chemotherapy and their radiation. And they say, what else can I do? Because I want to do everything in my power to keep this from coming back. And their team says to them, please don't worry so much. Your scans are coming back clear. You're fine. It's the patient who goes on to biologics and finally they're symptom free and they go, what should I not be eating or should be eating? What can I be doing? And they say, stop being so stressed. You are fine. So the line of fine is this delineation between I'm completely controlled by my symptoms and this next frontier of how do I actually take control of my health? And everybody on this call today is actually sitting at this line of opportunity because millions of people every single day are literally putting up their hand going, how can I actually have more control? And I didn't really understand this. And I want to make sure before I go on, can you guys all see my presentation? You see where it says impact medicine. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Margaret. Great. <laughs> have a bad habit. So I want to tell you first about a patient um, named uh, Mary. And Mary came to see me and she was 358 pounds. She came to see me because she was pre-diabetic. She was not on any medication, but we would all understand that Mary was heading in that direction. And, and Mary, for anyone who's concerned, is not her real name. And I worked with Mary for a year and we modified her diet and we put her on strategic supplementation and we talked about the origins of how she eats and how she manages stress and what's going on in her body. And in the course of that year, Mary lost almost a hundred pounds, which was incredible. She felt powerful. And when Mary went back to her family one Christmas, I never heard from Mary again. We were making all of this this progress. And I thought, well, okay, maybe Mary just got well. That's one of the things we do, right? What are you coming in for? How can I help you? Let's get you to your goal. And then off, off you go. Mary left just before this one particular Christmas holiday where she was going back to her family. And 18 months later, she returned to my practice and she returned to my practice having gained back all of the weight. And in my conversation with Mary, when she told me she had gained back all of her weight. We, I really wanted to understand the root cause behind all of it. And she said, honestly, Megan, when I went home at Christmas, my mom and sister shamed me with such ferocity around the decisions I was attempting to make that it was easier just to go back to the way we have always eaten as a family than it was to try to fight them. And that's when I realized that this whole notion of somebody coming to see us for us to treat what's going on in their health and then stopping and then not understanding the steps that come before that and the steps that come after that was actually malpractice on my part. It was ultimately my responsibility to help keep her in that state of health, not just get her there in the first place. And so what we're going to unpack today when we talk about creating your signature system is an acknowledgement of the fact that there are things you can do before people ever come in your office. And there are innovative models of business and care that you can deploy on the other side of that experience as well. Now, we are in this unfortunate place where that video is going to play forever. Okay, I found that one button. Now, I... I, I want to, and I talk about the system of medicine because of Mary. She literally inspired all of this. She got me thinking outside the box of how I had been trained. I was literally told as a clinician in my residency that if you ask people to come back once they have gotten well and you create reasons for them to return without evidence, that it's unethical. And what I realized is that by not supporting people once we've actually gotten well, that was the unethical piece. So when I'm building businesses and I'm working in the, in the lane that I'm working on, I work from one fundamental belief. And that is when people have their health, they can change their lives. But anytime I build a business and I hope the same for you, I also look at the series of things that have to be true simultaneously because it's not an either or. And so for me, the things that have to be true simultaneously as I design a clinical model, as I design my own businesses, as I've designed anything else I do is how can I hold space one for having optimized patient care for the people that I'm working with? and a lifestyle that supports my three kids. And by support my three kids, I don't mean like send them on trips while mommy's working. I mean, like, how can we all maximize our time together? How can I be at those soccer games? How can I be at swim practice? How can I have my cake and eat it too? So I want you to understand that the lens through which we're going to talk about business today and the lens through which I talk about business is how do we actually have balance at the same time? So those value pieces are really critical and really important to me. 
So before we get into that model piece, I want to give you a background on the landscape. And we're going to do this a little bit as we go. I want you to understand why I'm thinking a certain way, because some of the things I talk about are not the way you've always done it. And so if you don't understand why, then what happens two weeks out, you're like, that was really interesting, but I can't, I'm just going to go back to the way I did it before. So I want you to understand my thinking and where we are, uh, where we're coming from. So it's important to understand where we fit in this broader wellness economy. So the global wellness economy, these statistics are coming out of 2022, peg health and wellness as a $4 trillion global industry. Like I can't, I cannot like even wrap my head around what this number means, but this is um, almost double the GDP of Canada. The global pharmaceutical industry is actually smaller than this, which is why some might argue that we are seen as a little bit of a threat. Now, when I talk about health and wellness, I'm not talking about just like naturopaths and nutritionists and clinicians. I'm talking about this. I'm talking about the broader wellness economy. But for us as business people in the health and wellness space, we need to actually understand consumer behavior. We need to understand where people are spending money and why they are spending money. Because sometimes it might not be convenient for us that people want to invest in Botox. But that is where some people want to spend their money. So we need to understand why. We need to understand why that is actually over-indexed in terms of consumer spending. People want to look good. They want to feel good. They want to look a little bit younger than their actual age. We actually need to understand and just acknowledge some of these behaviors that humans have so that as we are crafting offers and we are leveraging language and we are trying to bring people into our offices, we can really understand where people are coming from and then we can present them with a different way to get there. So this is really interesting. So when we talk about all of us as clinicians, I don't know if you can see my little blue uh, circle here, but this is where a lot of us are talking. This is actually one of the biggest circles on, uh, on the screen here is the healthy eating, nutrition, weight loss. This is a $946 billion bubble all on its own. So if you ever have this limiting belief that thinks up, oh, there's so many people doing weight loss, there's so many people doing this, there are more people in the United States managing diabetes, the entire population of Canada. So you can niche right in there for populations that have specific needs and fully let go of this preconceived idea that there might not be enough people to go around. Millions of people every day are dropped onto that line of fine. And so I preface this because we're going to talk about building authority in the marketplace. And one of the things that holds people back from doing that and making that decision is they're like, oh, I'm just a little bit scared to pigeonhole myself into one thing. I don't want to say no to other people. I want you to know there's lots of people and lots of money and lots of investment to go around. So before I keep going, I'd really love to just know in the chat, how many of you actually have a niche? How many of you have something that you focus on in your clinical practice? If you've got one, I'd love to just see the diversity of who you're helping with. Hormones, I love this. Anybody else? Everyone else is like, oh, shoot, she's going to make me pick my niche before the end of the thing. Gut health and hormones, hormones and Hashimoto's, I love it. Gut and insulin resistance, amazing. Women's fitness, metabolism, hormones, gut health, joint health. Awesome. Yeah, this is really, really great. Again, millions and millions of people within all of these respective, uh, within all of these respective verticals. So let's talk about the other piece of the landscape. And that is this, uh, this fun little feature we've got going on nowadays uh, called Dr. Google or chat GPT. And I think we need to talk about this when we're talking about building up programming and automating and leveraging our time, because uh, a lot of people say, oh, Megan, like, I think there's a real threat to us because of, you know, Dr. Google or ChatGPT. Um, and I agree that it is something that is going to factor in to how we are able to take care of patients. But I also simultaneously believe that what it's going to enable us do, to do is differentiate where our value has always sat. A lot of people for a lot of a long time have thought that what makes what we do valuable is the information that we have. I can tell you that the information that I was taught in school was out of date about six months after I graduated. None of what you do, none of what you sell is about information. What Google's very good at, what ChatGPT is very good at is collating information. When we are done talking today, I want all of you to know what you are not selling anymore is information. You sell one thing and one thing only, and that is your strategy. The reason I love the idea of my patients Googling their condition, and I would look for this, I would chart whether they had done this, is because to me, this is a rite of passage that patients move through. 
that they are so interested in their own health that they've now taken it upon themselves to go and look it up. It's the patients who don't want to know anything, who don't want to have any data, who don't want to understand even how to pronounce their disease. Those are the ones that I know are never going to make an investment in my practice. So I really do look for this. And I really think there's an opportunity there. We're going to talk about it because when people start to Google what's going on, we know they're standing at the line of fine. We see a symptom. This is the symptom of them being curious about what else is possible with respect to their health. I want you to look for that too. I want you to change your perspective around your patients who are Googling all the stuff because it feels a little bit annoying. I want you to go, whoa, this person is massively engaged. So here's the other thing that sits on either side of the line of fine. And this is where we're going to get into when we talk about building out your signature system. And I really want you to understand the delineation between the two. On one side of the line of fine is transactional care. Transactional care is like, I broke my wrist, I go to eMERGE, they reset it, they put it in a cast, I go back 10 days later, they re-x-ray it, they put it in another, like it is a transaction. It's not really that fun. It doesn't make me that healthy. It's very isolated. It manages a single problem. None of us actually want to treat people that way. We don't just want to deal with that tiny little bit of inflammation in their gut. We want to talk about how it interferes with our hormones. You've already told me that you actually look at the entire system. You look at it from a systems-based biology perspective. I want you to know that the deployment of transactional care is incongruent with systems-based biology. This whole idea of, I see my patient, I do an intake, I give them a prescription and then diet. They come back two weeks later, I make a change. They come back two weeks later, I try something else. They come back four weeks later, we see if it helps. That is transactional medicine with a bigger handout. So what I want you to think about today, as we talk about literally, if I was on stage right now, I'd be like stepping over the line fine. As we step over into the line of fine, into transformational care, I want you to think about the entire journey and experience. See, Mary would have done well to have had some information from me before she ever came into my office. She could have made significant lifestyle changes from a $300 course. Mary also would have benefited from moving into my membership on the backside where she would be able to access a coach or someone else who was knowledgeable to help hold her accountable to the changes that she made. We're going to talk about these different phases that patients move through and the business models that align with it. But I want you to know that all of them are happening on the opposite side of the line of fine, and all of them have a lens towards transformation. That's what coaching is all about. And if we're actually going to get people to eat differently, if we're actually going to get them to be like, no, I'm not going back to eating how we ate when I was eight, and I'm immune to your shaming, we have to transform them. And we can't do that through a series of transactions. So here's my overarching idea in all of this. And what I'm going to hopefully hold myself accountable to delivering to you guys today is that I'm proposing that the model in which we practice is actually and will become part of the medicine itself. How we give care, the thought we give into it, the experience that we deliver, the email prompts, the coaching apps, all of these things are actually part of the care itself. When you walk through a hospital that's dark and dingy with like a light that's flashing like this, that's actually part of the care itself. It's awful. So how do you make your care spectacular? How do you make it something that people just constantly want to lean into? Now, if you want to go really, really deep on this, I can send you one of these, which is my book where I talk about this whole system of impact medicine. Um, I'm going to share with you at the end how you can access this because I'm going to send out a bunch of copies uh, of the book. So you've got to hang tight uh, in the chat. Here's what I want to know so far. Is this resonating? Just like a yes, if this is resonating, you're like, yes, I want to deliver transformational care and feel free if you're like, nope, I want to go back to like, we can, we can go back to that too. Okay. Awesome. I knew you'd say that, but thanks. I'm glad you guys are all in on these, uh, on these pieces. Okay. So what I just want to show you here, high level is uh, what I call the quadrants of care. This is not a line because people's care does not happen in a line. We have setbacks. We move around. We have different needs at different times. We peel the onion. We're like, Oh my gosh, there's some trauma in there. I got to go back to the one-on-one clinic. Like we move around with our health. None of us suddenly one day got healthy and then didn't have a moment where like, Oh gosh, now I have to unpack that other thing. Oh, this thing came. Oh, that stealth infection now was like the health does not work in a line. And so neither does the system, but the one place most people start when they are dumped at the line of fine is right here. 
I call this the aspirational quadrant. And if you want to come back and look at this one, I'll share the slides with Margaret so that you have access to those. But like there's some slides where I'm like, just take a picture of it. Take a picture of this one so you can come back and look at it. This first quadrant here, the aspirational quadrant, this is where people get to learn information from you for free. And you should give information away for free because information these days is kind of cheap and doesn't differentiate you at all. And to be honest, you're investing an awful lot of money in amazing information. And so you should package that up in a way that makes it accessible to other people. Because I promise you, no matter how much you share on Instagram, you're probably not going to completely transform somebody's life with it. But you will intrigue them enough to trust you. And that's the whole goal in this quadrant is to intrigue them enough that they have confidence in you, that they see you as an authority, and that they lean into wanting to work with you more. They deserve to trust their practitioner before they step forward and invest their time and energy and money to working with someone. So this aspirational quadrant is all the stuff we do on social. It's our email marketing. It's the speaking from stage. It's all those different things, whatever way you want to package that out. And when people know, love, and trust you, what they do is they move into the second quadrant. And for a lot of people, this is the first time they've ever done this, where they've really spent money out of their own pocket, not for reactive care. I broke my arm. I've got a UTI, but because they're like, I don't want that anymore. That's a whole different type of investment for people. We were trained on how to do reactive investments in healthcare. Very few people grew up in an environment where we're like, honey, let's, let's spend money on our health. Like we do that. But like, it was rare that our parents' generations did that. It's rare that our patients' parents did that. And so we have some education that we have to do here. I call this the empowerment or DIY quadrant because for people who are investing in this realm for the very first time, they're probably not going to drop 10 grand on a group program unless they're like really desperate. But they might drop 299 on a small program that gives them a distinct outcome. They may buy a book for the first time. They may subscribe and save to like protein and supplements. They may get a whoop. They're gonna do something that's low barrier. And what's gonna happen for them is they're gonna go, oh my gosh, it's amazing. I have control over my own health. And if you have an amazing offer in this quadrant, guess what? They'll credit you for that. Massive opportunity in this initial quadrant, but not like I've been on Instagram for three weeks and I'm going to offer you my 5k offer. No low barrier, single outcome, easy win. Now, some people will just get well and they'll be like, that's awesome. What else does Margaret have? Oh, she's got this cool membership. Great. I'm going to just come down here and hang out with her. I'm just going to listen to the webinar every month. I'm going to, I'm going to buy the supplements. I'm going to do the thing. We can get into what a membership uh, is, but this growth quadrant is for people who made a decision to get healthy. They've started to get healthy. And now they're like, I want to be in community with people who've made that decision too. This is what Mary needed all along. She needed another community that was just as powerful, not me pep talking her, but her peers who would also walk to that journey. This is not only transformational for your patient's health. It's a revenue stream for you. I always build patient care first, and then I overlie. does this actually make sense business-wise on top of it? So this could be a membership. This could be a group program. This could be also a retreat. It could be all sorts of things. And I want you to know there's massive opportunity here to get better, get better health outcomes for patients and drive more passive revenue in practice. Now, this is where we're going to get started today when we talk about building out strategic care um, and we talk about creating your signature care plan. This is where people go, well, maybe I didn't get the outcome in that little course. Maybe I got a bit better, but I don't understand why I'm still tired or my blood work looks normal, but I'm still, you know, having trouble getting out of bed in the morning. This is where they come and see you one on one. This is called strategic care because you don't sell your time anymore. You sell your strategy. So. I'm going to teach you what goes into that strategy, the ingredients that need to be present. But I also just for a quick second, want to talk about you as the clinician entrepreneur, as the business owner. So when I design a program, I already shared this. There's, I use what I call the three C's. It's not in the slides. The first C is the care plan. Does this actually make sense? Are we going to get people well? Yes or no? Because sometimes people show me their transformational programs. And I'm like, that just doesn't make any sense. Like people aren't, we're, we're just, that doesn't, like the biology doesn't work. We want to make sure that it actually works first from a health perspective. Then what we layer on top of that is we start to look at um, that next, the next layer with respect to the business. And like, does this actually make sense financially? In my chat, in my book, I call it sense and sense, C-E-N-T-S, which is where I get that second C. It's a stretch. And then the third one is I call it chemistry. And the chemistry is looking at the neurochemistry of the experience. So I've done this whole lecture and training on leveraging dopamine 
in your patient care to keep your care sticky for people? How do we, what kind of user experience are we creating for people? What kind of prompts are we giving them? What kind of package do we send to their house to make them excited about their care? This is now where we get to overlay this whole creative component uh, to somebody's uh, care. So we're going to get into the strategy piece, the care strategy, but I want you to know that there are multiple uh, layers that go on top of it. And we've litmus test all of this from a business perspective. So I'm not going to lead you. Uh, I'm not going to lead you astray. One quick piece I want you guys to check in on as the clinician entrepreneurs, as the person deploying these business pieces, is that I want you to understand where you are at right now uh, so that you can inventory really what's available to you in terms of, of business opportunities relative to where you're at in your business. So when I talk about where you are at in your own security, I, like high level, I talk about sort of three, three real phases of your career as a, uh, as a clinician. The first phase of your business is the keeping your head above water phase. Like, let's just call it what it is. It's like, don't die or drown in the sea of business, right? It's like you get thrown in, you're like, oh my gosh, there's so much to know. I have like this kind of bank account and I have to report this. And I didn't even know that. And I like, should I be on Instagram or YouTube or all of them or not? And is it a personal account or business account? And like, when do I present the offer? And should I put the price on my butt? Like all of that, right? And once you just like, all you have to do in that initial phase is not drown. I mean that like so graciously, Margaret started a business. I started, like, you, you can have like 10 MBAs. You're still going to start a business. And the whole goal is just don't drown. Just don't drown. Some of you right now are like, yeah, it's like me. I'm a toes on the ground. I'm just, just trying not to drown. The problem is, is like, if we teach you to tread water, yeah, I really appreciate that honesty, right? But we teach you to tread water and you're like, okay, I'm in the ocean and I'm not drowning. I'm good, Megan. It's awesome. The problem is, is then you're going to bob around in the sea, right? It's risky long-term. So the second phase we move you to is that we want you to start to swim. And ideally, if you're going to start to swim, I want you to start to swim towards shore. And I want you to swim towards shore because it's safer there and you have options. So everything we talk about in terms of building out your business is about giving you options, giving you options into the future. Some of you are just starting to swim. Here's how you know you're just starting to swim. You're like, I have patients who are consistently coming in. My patients keep coming back. Every month I know I'm going to have some income coming in for my patients. And I'm starting to see how eventually I'm going to run out of time. That's the learning to swim phase. I bet a lot of you are in the learning to swim phase, right? You're like, I'm swimming towards shore. I'm like hoping I get there. Because when we get to shore, now we have options. And when I talk about options, I don't mean we're no longer seeing patients. What I mean is you can swim when you want. And you can build other things when you want. So when I talk about building an online program or I talk about creating a membership, I want you to know that there's a time and place to do those things. And that's once you've got to shore. And I share this because there's nothing worse than getting deeper into this and you exclude yourself from the conversation. You're like, mm, I'm not on the beach yet. I'm just trying to keep my head above water. So I'm just going to do this for the rest of the conversation. I want you to know that whether you're treading water or you're standing on the beach, everything we talk about moving forward is relevant to you. You just get to move at your own pace, but I want you to place yourself in one of these three places and take the pressure off yourself to have like a full volleyball game going when you're still trying to get to the beach. Are we all good on that? Like this has to be an agreement between the two of us or the three of us or the 800 of us, however many of us are. I don't like not seeing your faces. So when we talk about these pieces, thank you, Don, for saying that. Um, when we talk about these pieces, I want your business to deliver three things for you. I want it to be something you love. I want it to be something that's lucrative and I want it to be something that is leveraged, meaning you are not forever trading time for money. Which of these things resonates with you the most? I want to love it. I want it to be lucrative and I want it to be leveraged. Put them in the order of importance to You're all going to put love first. We know that. So lucrative or leveraged, which one comes next for you? I am assuming all of you want to love your business. Leverage, lucrative. There's no right or wrong answer here, by the way, because you have, I want you to have all three. Lucrative, lucrative, leverage. Okay, awesome. We're going to get into those pieces. I want you to also have balance, just so you know. But I already talked about that at the beginning. Okay. I want to, as we talk about these different pieces, um, I want to just also move the yeah, but part of your brain that's thinking about time. And I want to address this piece too. Because as we get closer to shore, and I talked about this, as you get busier, you're going to go, I don't have, I don't have time to necessarily do all of those things. So part of the leverage piece and part of enabling you to be more lucrative is making sure that we are allocating your time effectively. So when I talk about this section as being about the clinician entrepreneur, there are some leadership decisions you are going to have to make around how you utilize your time, some things you have to look at. 
So when people come to see us and start to work with us, initially what's happening in their work week, they're spending about 60% of their time seeing patients. That makes sense. 30% of their time is doing follow-up on patients, you know, sending the emails, answering that, is this a gluten-free grain? What grain should I use if this is like all of that stuff, right? The other way I could label this right here is unpaid work. Mm. Yeah, that hits home. Uh, 5% here on business development investing in our future, which is ironic because for a living, we teach people how to invest in their future. Um, and 5% and the label never shows up here is around investing in the relationships that will help drive those future outcomes. Here's where I want to move you towards. So when we talk about the leverage piece, take a picture of this so you can look at it against how you're spending your time. We move people eventually to a place where 25% of their time is spent seeing patients. Why? Because they're on the beach. They can go into the water or they can stay on the sand third, 15% of their time is spent on direct follow-up. They're more efficient with their time and they've created more leverage in their business. 30% is on business development, their future. And 30% is on the relationships. Look, Margaret and I have a relationship, right? Is on the relationships that help move their future and their impact uh, forward. We've got to change how you allocate your time if we are going to add more of the love and the lucrativeness to what it is that you do. Because the one-on-one -on -one model is actually challenging from a risk perspective. So as we start to move to that place where we are talking about deploying your strategy versus just the one-on-one -on -one, uh, one -on -one care, we need a gateway offering. We need something about us that differentiates us even beyond the idea of having our niche because running a one-on-one -on -one practice is expensive. You can see that. The more expensive our practice is, the more risky it is. And so the biggest secret, and I already told this to you up front, is that the way you're going to earn more in your practice, the way you're going to free up more of your time is not necessarily trading your time for money. It's packaging your clinical strategy into a system of care. And so that's what we call impact medicine. So let's look at how we do that. And so the thing I want you to understand, and I'll, I'll summarize this for you afterwards and you'll see why. When you create a system of care, two things happen in your business. One, it enables you to charge more for what you do. And I'll explain why that is. So we increase your overall revenue in your practice. The other thing that it will change for you is the lifetime value of each of your patients. Why? Because they stick around longer. Why? Because you've created a longitudinal plan for them. We've moved away from, okay, I'll see you in a few weeks and we'll just see where you're at to, I know, because I'm always working in the same realm and in the same niche, exactly where people are going to go and where what they are going to need, because we laid out the map of the transformation for them. And it's really critical that we communicate that piece to patients. So just again, in terms of take a picture of this, so you understand where your different offers can go. The goal of this quadrant here, I know just about all of you are probably talking on social media and have a presence. Uh, this is to build trust. This DIY quadrant over here is to build patient autonomy. And we've talked about why that's really important. Down here where it says action in your strategy quadrant, this is where we are working at a high, high level, leveraging our expertise, recognizing that one-on-one -on -one care is expensive and risky to deploy a high value experience for patients that get them to an outcome. And this quadrant is where we keep them well. You will not build all of these things at once, but the ability to add income here and income here and have a consistent flow of content and know what to talk about here means that you need a system of care right down here. So let's talk about what that looks like. Take a picture of this. The next two slides, you could build out your whole signature care system yourself. So what we have found, and I had, I ran a signature care system in my own practice. I played around with it. I'm like an experiential kind of person. I have to try things out. I'm like, well, that didn't work. This did work. It took us a long time to figure these pieces out. But we realize that there are some core ingredients that go into an effective signature care system. And I use the acronym ACTION to help understand and delineate what these are. So the first thing that really matters when we are building out a system of care, a transformational system of care, is we need to have alignment. You got to have the right person in the room with you. I cannot be an expert in women's hormones. And I, my whole promise to my patients was I'll have your brain and body available to you at a moment, 
moment's notice. I worked with entrepreneurs. That's what they wanted, an unfair advantage when they were pitching, when they were growing their companies, when they were closing their Series C, whatever it is that they were needing to do. And so those are the patients that did best with me. I got patients all the time who had seen other practitioners who told them, you know, maybe your job is just too stressful. You should look at something else. The reason they came to see me is because I made a deal with them on day one. I'll keep you alive while you're fundraising for the next three months. And then you owe me six months of recovery. And this is how it's going to go. And I'd be like, okay. So I had the right kind of patient sitting across me. That's just how I rolled. You need to have alignment. The next piece is we need care communication. What does that mean? You literally need to tell them where they're going. They need to understand why they have to come in every three weeks. They need to understand why they have to download the darn app and take photos of their food. They need to understand why they're taking each of those supplements. They need to understand why it's important that they're doing this weightlifting now and they used to love their Peloton. If they don't understand what those things are and how it fits as you move towards the outcome they have identified, they leave. The biggest reason we see patients leaving uh, people's practices is because their patients don't understand why they're there. They came in to have one problem solved and then it got hijacked by how the practitioner likes to do things. We all lost track of why the person actually came in. No one really knows why we're doing things, but we're like responding to what's happening in their health. And we're like way over here in a totally different forest. You got to give them a map. And when you have the map, you can manage their expectations and you can say to them, listen, along the way, you might find that there's this big ocean and you might want to go for a swim and you might get cold and we might have to warm you up and we might have to manage the situation through and it might change the speed at which we get to the destination, but you've got to give them a map. Otherwise they are just wandering off all on their own. I cannot emphasize this piece enough. It is so easy to do that. We gave you a care plan template just for signing up for this talk where we outlined this for patients. I gave it to every patient in their second visit, the map of where they are going to go. I hope you guys all got that. If you didn't get that, we'll make sure that you get it. But that map is critical. Traction. Traction is how we keep people connected to that care plan moving forward. It might be a series of emails. It might be an app. It might be a health coach. It might be uh, a Facebook group where there's a prompt that comes out every Sunday. I want you to know that if there is not a communication strategy that happens in between touch points with you, the person goes back to their regular life. The other thing that happens when you help to maintain traction through an app, through emails, through community, however you want to do it is you also release some dopamine and dopamine is darn addictive. And when I get a dopamine hit from this new decision I made with respect to my health over here, that's exciting. One of the things I would get my patients to do every time they had a touch point with me, I used to give it to them and I realized I didn't even have to, I could just instruct them to do it. And it was just as powerful is I'd have them go buy some new piece of health paraphernalia. First appointment, it would be a journal and a water bottle. They loved it. They'd email them, oh my gosh, I'm so excited about my water bottle. I'm so, no, no, no. The reason I had them do a water bottle in the first one and have it be new was because it was dopamine. And number two, every time they saw that water bottle, they would remember the commitment they had made to themselves. This is what I mean about a user experience. And this is what I'm talking about with traction. We can get really creative here. Investigation is the testing that you do that explains to people where they are at. People love investigation. They love testing. They love testing. I can't emphasize this enough. North Americans spend something like $1.7 billion on psychics every year. This isn't like a thing against psychics. This is just a, we love to pay to know unique things about ourselves. The investigation piece makes what you do super sticky for the, yeah, but the people who are kind of trying to opt themselves, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I'm not that bad. Maybe, maybe it's somebody else who needs to be doing this. What happens when we start to look at blood work or a urine analysis or anything else is it makes our care really sticky. And now we have something to work towards. So those metrics really matter. Others Who else needs to be part of that care? So if we went really deep on this, I would say as a clinician, you wear three different types of hats. So we start to delineate that once we really get into the depths of building out your program. And lastly, next steps. And by next steps, what I mean is every time you connect with a patient, you say, in two weeks, we are going to be focused on this. And this is why it's important. In four weeks, you're going to touch base with this person. This is why you have that happening. And this is why it's important. I would tell people what was happening three appointments ahead. One, so that I was constantly managing expectations. And two, so they would never have this lingering thought of, I don't understand why I'm coming in today. 
if they don't have buy-in, they won't stick around because what happens when we start to work with patients is like, let's be honest, we can take out gluten and dairy in most people and they feel like 50% better. And if we didn't lay out this plan, like I'm good, good. Thanks. We're good. Except they'll be like, Mary in 18 months, they'll be back in your office and they'll be disappointed in you, in you, not them. So we've got to tell them why we're doing those next steps. In fact, one of the things we do is we start to delineate each of the phases of their care and we help them anticipate the fact when you get to this phase, you're going to feel like a million bucks. And I want you to know it's going to get even better. And then when they get there and they're like, I feel like a million bucks, they go, I remember you told me that. And I also remember you told me I needed to keep going. So managing those expectations when people are no longer leveraging pain as their motivation for engaging in their health is absolutely critical for buy-in. Now, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. If this is helpful, can you just throw helpful into the chat so that I know that we are like moving along? I hope this gives you some ideas in terms of how we're going to lay these pieces, uh, uh, how we're going to be laying these pieces out. Here's the next page. No, this isn't the next page. I'm going to give you an example. I actually can't see what's coming next. So it's as much of a surprise for me uh, as it is for, I like, I printed it, but like, what are we going to do? I'm not going to look at my printed stuff. So it's like, we're all in this together, guys. Um, here's, here's what happened when people moved into, um, I don't know where the care plan sheet is, but I'll find out Devin where, where it is. I'll make sure you get it might be in your junk folder. So when people would come into my office, I would, and it, cause I just want to give you an example. I would say, I want you to have your brain and body available to you at a moment's notice that most of my, my practice was built off of, uh, referrals. And so people had an understanding as to why they were coming in to see me. But for me to really build out a plan, a care plan, where I'm like, I'm going to take you through these 12 steps, I needed to be mindful of the fact that I needed people to be at a certain, they needed to be eligible for that, for lack of a better term. So what I mean by that is if I get an entrepreneur who comes to me and they're like, I was referred to you, I'm so excited to work with you. I want my brain and body available in a moment's notice. And by the way, I also have colitis and I'm in an active flare and I can't eat anything. Well, like, my signature system isn't going to work for them because they're in a state of crisis. So I always had an eligibility criteria that I worked with when I build up my system. And this is really important because as you take a picture of, I think it's the next slide, but again, it's going to be a surprise for us. Um, some of you are going to say to yourself, I know, but everybody's a little bit different. Everybody is a little bit different until they're not. Everybody's a little bit different at the front and you can think about the system that you want to have to bring everybody up to the same page. And when they're on the same page, now they can move through that system. So I called this our eligibility criteria. There were three things I looked at because I also wanted my practice to be nice for me. The first thing I asked was, can you eat? And I meant that kind of sincerely. I had a number of patients who felt they were very important, could eat whatever they wanted. Um, and that meant they had like Popeye's four times a week and three vodka waters every day for lunch and like martinis till midnight. Uh, they couldn't eat in such a way that my program would work for them. And so I wouldn't work with them until they had seen my nutritionist for the first six weeks. Cause I wasn't at that point going to like micromanage their food. I was just going to hand them off because it's part of my eligibility criteria. The next one was, can you think? And by, can you think what I mean is the people who came in were like, I've seen everybody, nothing ever works. Not sure this is going to work either. Uh, those people were not thinking in such a way that the work we were going to do was actually going to be successful for them. So they went and they worked with our mindset coach. The third group of people were, are you stable? The colitis flare. I can't do my signature system for those patients either. So I had provisions in how I set up my signature care system. So I just worked with them in a very transactional way for six weeks to get them stable so I could move them into my program. So I want you to know we've thought about all of these different pieces when we talk about it. I had three real pillars I moved people through. And I'm giving you this example and you'll get the slides because when I show you the next page, you're going to want an example to work from. Pillar number one was digestion and detox. I always started there. No surprise, you guys would probably start there uh, as well. So we worked on digestion and detox. If they had, like had perfect digestion, one thing happened once, uh, I didn't hang out here. I didn't treat something that didn't need to happen. Maybe they just came from somebody else. Maybe like, who knows? They had perfect digestion. We move on to pillar number two, because I'm not going to treat things they don't need treated. Um, pillar number two is where we would look at endocrine and metabolic support. We'd run the Dutch test. We do look whatever we needed to do. We'd get things stable. And we hung out here for about three months because most of my patients were women. And I wanted three menstrual cycles before we determined whether or not we were going to move like really practical medical stuff, right? Pillar number three is where we got into mitochondrial and brain support. Now, if your gut's a mess and your hormones are all over the map, 
I'm, I can't jump to pillar three. We can't be like, oh, here's a, here's a mitochondrial supplement and you're going to be fine, right? We all know that's not going to work. So it has to make medical sense first. Then we started to talk about care plan communication, where we were going and why we had to break, break it down and break it out this way. And you know what most patients said? This makes so much sense. No one has ever explained it to me like this before. They just felt sold to their whole experience on the other side of the line of fine was transactional when all they needed to know was what the map looked like. So I wanted you to have that because as you look at this, you're going to be like, what is she talking about? So I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about here. And this is something you're going to be able to spend some time in and really brainstorm with, like take a picture of this and then print off eight copies of it and write all over it, because that's how I built out mine. It looks really simple in hindsight, but it took me a while to play with. So I want to just, I want to identify for you what these different sections are on this page. And if you've got questions as we go here, this is a really great opportunity for me to say, uh, I'm going to share with you a little bit about our signature care uh, system program, but I'm also going to hang out after that and answer any questions that you have about. So if you've got questions about this, like we will, we will make sure we answer those. So I want you to know that I talk about three phases of care, clinical care that are really relevant and important. And again, you can listen to that. You can listen to this again, uh, the discovery phase. These are the first few visits that people have with you where you're really taking their case. You're getting to know, uh, you're getting to know them. This is, you should all know the highest risk interaction that you have with patients, because this is when they're like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to ever eat gluten again. This feels like a lot of work. And you spent a ton of time with them and you worked up their case. And like, you're like, if they don't stick around with you, that was, that was just a really expensive interaction and you're probably not going to get them better. So I just want you to know, this is a high risk uh, phase. This discovery phase is really, uh, is really critical to the art of how we move uh, people forward. It's where we start to set those expectations. It's where you're going to do all of your work. It's where you're going to determine whether someone's eligible to move into your signature care system. Now we talked about eligibility. So this is where you get to define what your eligibility criteria looks like. Yours might be the same as mine. They might be different. You'd be like, I do the nutrition, Megan. So I'm not going to send someone else for that, but maybe it's the mindset piece, right? Or maybe you're like, I want to do this version of nutrition, but if you're eating at Popeye's every night or Chick-fil-A, like I got another plan for you before you can come and work with me, like just straight up, who will you work with and who will you not? And do you want to create some kind of leveraged program maybe to deal with those people instead of working with them one-on-one? -on -one? Like, I don't want to spend time one-on-one -on -one with people in clinic if you're eating Chick-fil-A every night. I just don't. Maybe you do, but what's your plan for them? Then we have the active phase of care. We've gone through discovery. We told them what's coming next. These are your pillars. I gave you space for four. You may only have three. You may want to have five. Don't have more than five. It's just too much. So try to keep it to four or less, you probably can't do it in two. What are your pillars that get people to the outcome your patients want? And then maintenance is, what is your plan for them once you get them to that outcome? Where are you going from there? That's like high level. This is deeper. I'll tell you how we can move through it uh, together. But if you've got questions, like throw those into the Q&A section, like if it's fresh in your mind right now, so we can come back to those pieces. That's actually how it started for me is I literally had this and I started to fill in the blanks. Once I re recognized what the different phases were that I needed to move people through, then I got more granular into those pillars of care. And it was a little bit of trial and error. So again, I've shared this, that I'm proposing that the model in which we practice is part of the medicine itself. So it adds financial stability to us which adds to our staying power, which adds to our capacity to deliver things through a lens of innovation. And this sustainability piece is really important to me. Your ability to support yourself as a practitioner and that financial piece is really important to me. When we talk about the social determinants of health, the number one indicator of health is financial stability. So it is something that I speak about uh, quite emphatically and quite deliberately when I talk about the need for us to have business success as practitioners, we cannot over here be like, I want you all to be healthy. And secretly, I have no idea how to support myself financially. It is the number one determinant of health. So to me, it's a congruency piece. To me, it's it's part of the healing. And so I want to make sure that as we're building out people's businesses, that uh, we are doing it in a way that enables you to simultaneously deliver impact and that financial stability piece. 
So we talk about the six phases that people move through in, in their business when we get more granular than just, am I treading, am I swimming, or am I on the beach? And the second phase that we really focus on is on this idea of establishing authority. Here's the really cool thing about establishing authority is that authority is in essence a gateway into new revenue streams in your practice. And the reason that authority is that gateway is because when we think about medicine and we think about healthcare, people want to see the expert. They do not want to see the generalist. If your mom is unwell and has been diagnosed with something catastrophic, you're not going to take her to the person down the street just because you know they're closest. You're going to ask everyone who is the best person for her condition. And if that's the standard that you have for your mom, you better believe it's a standard everyone else has for their parents as well. Everyone else has for their kids and all of us frankly have for ourselves. So generalists do well in the transactional model, but when we are talking about transformational care, it is more of a challenge. And so when you create your signature care system, when you have those pillars, when you're like, this is the outcome that I deliver to a particular population, by virtue of simply naming that system, you immediately elevate your authority. You could spend 10 years building up your social media account, or you could make a decision on your niche and you could build out a signature care system and you could have it in less than a week because no one else is going to have the same signature care system as you. No one else has invented impact medicine. I'm the only person who's the authority on that. And that happened as soon as I made a decision and created a system around it. So this is really critical to me. It doesn't take you a year to develop your signature care system. It can take you three weeks. It can take you a week. And once you do that, what it does is it starts to open up new income streams in each of these other quadrants. That's why I shared those quadrants with you. And I told you, you don't get to have them all at once, but you want to know what the linchpin thing is that you create. You create a signature care system because as soon as you have it and you name it and you label it, you can, with authority, increase your rates, regardless of how full you are. If you don't have a signature care system, you have to wait for the supply and demand curve of economics. You create a signature care system and you step into that authority. We also immediately will increase that lifetime value of our patients, which I've already shared because they stick around longer. So simply by creating that system, we've opened up 10 new streams of income that are otherwise very challenging to start to deploy in your clinical practice. Cause you're gonna be like, well, I guess I'm gonna kind of make a course, but I don't know what to make it on and I'll try this and it won't work. And then I'll try this and then I'll maybe try that. It doesn't fit into a broader context or system for our patients. It's a whole bunch of random initiatives. And if there's one thing I know for sure, I don't wanna do random at this phase of my life. I want to build things out strategically. So I have a few other colleagues and I have tons of these stories that I could take you through, but what's really cool about um, all of these practitioners is that they all were looking for something more in practice. They were looking for ways to add uh, leverage. So Stephanie had a one-on-one -on -one practice. She had a six week waiting list. Um, she had created two random online programs, but, but didn't understand how they fit into our broader ecosystem. She created her signature care system. It took her two weeks to do it. And suddenly she now had language and context to reposition those courses. It allowed her to create a high ticket offer. It allowed her to create a group program. So suddenly these things that were mulling around in her head, she was really quickly able to change what it is that she did. Uh, Dr. Marie Matheson, she was in a different position. She'd been in practice for a long time treating Lyme. She's like, Megan, I'm dying. I need something else. And so the very first thing we had Marie do was she created her signature care system. And the second that she was able to do that, she could spot all of these different opportunities that were available to her. She's an example of a practitioner who was on the beach already. She just needed to open the door uh, strategically. But I've got other practitioners, a practitioner named uh, Stacy, for example. And one of the cool things about Stacy was that she didn't necessarily have these things. She didn't necessarily have a uh, full practice at this point, but she was like, I'm medium busy. And she was highly coachable is what Stacy had in common. And so what we did for Stacy um, is she, I said, you need to do two things. One, you need to increase your rates, but she was really hesitant to do that. Um, and secondly, she, um, she didn't have a system. And so she went back, she created her signature care system. She did it within, uh, two weeks. She increased her rates, her practice, probably 50% full. Um, and then what happened on the backside of that, um, uh, of that piece is she emailed me off the chart. She's like, Megan, I made $30,000 more this month and I didn't do any more work. All I did was reposition my offering. 
So my patients are sticking around longer. So she was able to fill up that remaining vacancy in her practice. She was able to take on more new patients. And she did all of this without having to work more. She just reorganized her time according to a new system. So it's a super powerful way to be able to start to add that leverage and those lucrative pieces into her, um, into her practice. So, um, I could keep going because there's a ton of different pieces uh, to this. Uh, I can start to talk about the economic pieces. I'm going to send you guys all of these slides so that you can see this, so that you can see these case studies, so you can look up uh, these different practitioners. I do want to share uh, one thing with you. So I, I made my system because I had those pieces and I just filled it in and I figured it out. And I, that that's what works. Uh, that often works uh, for me. And in some areas, I need a little bit more uh, a little bit more guidance. And so I just want to share with you really quickly, and this is an invitation, but by no means something, uh, no pressure at all. Uh, we do have a program called the Signature Care System to help develop and create this. So I kept sharing with people, here's the thing that you need, just follow this one thing I told you to take a screenshot of. And, and all these people came back to me and they're like, Megan, I can't, I can't build from just that. And so I said, well, you can read my book um, or uh, we decided to record last spring an actual course that you could move through uh, to design this. Now, when I make courses, I put in a lot of modules, but not like I give you as much information as you need, but not more. So this isn't school. This is about moving your business forward. And so I wanted to design a program where you could move through it. And it's all built on like, here's the information you need. And here's the action you need to take so that you are in a position where in two to three weeks, you have your signature care system. So that in two to three weeks, you can be like, I am Megan. I am the creator of the impact health system. And this is what it costs to work with me whether you charge one-off visits, whether you do want to do it as packages, like all of those things we get into in this program. How do we package out these visits? How do we charge? How do we mitigate risk? How do we name the program? How do we pick a profitable niche? Like how do all of those things happen so that we're designing a signature care system? And the signature care system does not mean that you need to have nutritionists and health coaches working for you. You decide where you are at what outcome you want to deliver, and you get to decide who the people are that you work with. You could be a health coach who decides to step into authority and create your signature care system. You may hire other health coaches. You may leverage an app. You may be like, I created all this content. I just want to send out those that content. So you you can do this however you need to do this. You don't have to be in practice for 10 years. You just actually have to make the decision. You're like, oh, I actually want to practice from a position of authority uh, as opposed to that transactional model of uh, care. Um, so just really quickly, I want to share with you guys two things. One, uh, the investment and two, uh, the bonuses that we've put together. And then I will also just let you know, um, uh, Margaret has has put together and has fronted um, providing you guys with a really amazing uh, discount on this. I told you about Stacy. This shows you how you can um, really drive uh, an ROI from these pieces. And so the investment to join, to have access to the, the program, um, it's a $2,000 investment. There's an opportunity to um, invest in a monthly perspective. When we price programs, the way that we want to do that is that if you have one patient who moves into this new program, we want the program to be fully covered. So we price all of our programs like that. We want you to have an immediate ROI. So you could spend the next three weeks creating your signature care program, elevate your rates and within six weeks have a complete ROI on what it is that you have created. So we're really intentional around how we set it up that way so that you can see where that ROI comes from. Now, I also know that to just give you information, you're immediately going to be like, well, I have to create this and I have to make this. And then I have to have a marketing thing and all of the stuff. And so where we can, we've also um, bonused those pieces in for you. So we've already given you this just by coming uh, today so that you have that care plan template. I give it to everybody on their second appointment uh, so they know where we're going with respect to our care. So I gave you our exact template. All of these can be modified in Canva. We give you six options of like a one pager of what your methodology actually is um, so that you can use that for marketing. You could put it on your website. You could make it as part of a patient package. There's infinite number of ways you could do it. They're all designed differently because all of your aesthetics are differently um, and they're all Canva templates. So they're really easy for you to be able to uh, modify. Uh, we put together uh, a guide and workbook on how to find a profitable niche because one of the things is you have to find people who actually are going to invest to work with you. And then you can work with everybody, but you've got to make, you've got to build that profitability piece uh, first. 
Um, we given you a guide then to 30 profitable niches to help narrow that down for you so that you've got a cheat sheet that you can work with. Um, we gave you a workbook and the training um, from our copywriter who works within our community, Sarah Cook, uh, for naming your signature care system, because that's like the one thing, if you don't know what to call it, you're like, I don't know if I want it. Um, I can't do it until I have a name. So here you go. This is how you're going to name your program. Like, I want you to have this in play in your practice in three weeks. That's the goal here. Um, and then lastly, remember I talked about the keeping your head above water. So we have a program called the first 18. We've put thousands of practitioners through this program. The first 18 is like the first 18 things you need to have in place so that you don't drown in business. So we're going to give you that to you, um, as well. It's awesome. How to have conversations with people like meet and greet conversations that convert the seven P's of that, how to position your marketing, what you should be doing on social media, like all of the basics of how you have a strong foundation is all within uh, the first 18. And then Margaret did this thing and you should screenshot this um, RWS 20 and you get 20% off the signature care system. And I am like landing planes here. Yes, Haley, thank you uh, for throwing that into the chat. So there's a link there that takes you to more information about the signature care system program. Um, if it's something that you want to join us in, uh, please screenshot this uh, because this is going to be available until October 4th. Uh, so this discount code will work until then. You can join us inside Signature Care System. Um, so I just want to be fully transparent about all of those pieces. And then one last thing, and if you're ever pitching a program, I just want you to know this is like my favorite thing. I put it in everything because this is how I am. And I really like it when I get rewarded uh, for these types of things. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mail out a signed copy of Impact Medicine to everybody who joins in the next 24 hours. So I'll send uh, I'll send one to you. No one said they were in Australia. So that seems like an easy uh, offer to make because I've literally done that before. And then eight months later, uh, it gets mailed back to me. Um, but for anyone who joins in the next 24 hours, I'm going to mail you a signed copy of my book, Impact Medicine, where we get into the nuances of like building those group programs and the memberships and, and all of those uh, different pieces. But the gateway to all of them is signature care. doesn't matter what layer of programming you are in in our world. We are going to teach you to do that piece first because it is the cornerstone of building a sustainable business and practice. So on that note, uh, I just want to thank all of you. I'm two minutes over. Um, I apologize for that piece, but Margaret really did have a long and lovely introduction. Um, but I'm here. If you guys have questions about signature uh, care system, about some of those quadrants of care, if you want me to bring back any of those slides, I'm more than happy to do that. This has been fantastic. I know the questions are going to stop popping in, but I just want to say thank you so much. This has been incredible. I took two pages of notes. This is gold, you guys. Um, if it calls to you, I really encourage you to jump in because if I know anything about Megan, she over delivers. So thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, Michelle, you'll get a recording for sure. Yeah, you will. Divya has a question about the typical duration for each pillar and what steps can be taken if a client faces challenges progressing through the initial pillar of the coaching program. Yeah, it's, this is such a good question. Um, so it depends on what your pillar is addressing. So like when we we're talking about hormones and I'm talking about women, it was 12 weeks because I like I needed a minimum of 12 weeks. Some of them were faster and be like, oh, you were faster. Good for you. And then the thing about outcomes is as clinicians, we get really hung up on this. We're like, I can't promise an outcome. And you're right, you can't promise it, but you can anchor people to an outcome. And this is really critical. So what I'd say to people is the digestive pillar typically takes about 12 weeks. Now, I want you to know some of my patients take nine months and some of them can do it in four. And so the timing at which we approach that outcome is equally important in terms of clinical data. So I don't have any red flags as to why we won't hit it approximately on that timeline. But if something comes up where we're not seeing the outcome or we're not seeing the changes that we anticipated, we're definitely going to get in there and we're going to talk about that. So depending on how you priced your program, you can create provisions around that. But again, first, we always create the provisions medically, and then we can come up with a business case around how we uh, manage it. So I never promise outcomes, but I anchor people to them. Awesome. Um, there's a question in the Q and a, um, mm -hmm. so, and you, you've addressed part of it saying, you know, she, she's asking about, or she or he is asking about, you know, this seems to work for clinicians that can afford to hire a nutritionist, et cetera. But what if you're just starting and struggling with getting enough paying clients? What I want to add to that question is 
if somebody is just starting and mm -hmm. still kind of struggling to get those first few clients, do you think that the signature care system is something that they can build right from day one? Or is it something that they need to be at a certain place already in their business in order to do that? Yeah. So my experience is that the signature care system is an accelerator to drive more patients into your practice. Because again, people are not looking for a generalist. Now, what I will say will be different for someone who's first starting than for someone who's been in practice longer is you're probably going to be a little bit broader in who your signature care system is for. I optimize, like I'm doing weight loss for perimenopausal women. That's pretty wide right? So we're going to be able to pull in a much broader demographic of individuals. The outcome we're after is a little bit less uh, specific. So you're just not going to be like, uh, I'm going to treat your chronic Lyme. Uh, we're going to go, we're just going to go wider than that. So we can capture a, a broader market. Um, Andrea is asking if you set up your programs with clients as a monthly fee or as a pay in full with the, given that the timing varies significantly for each. Yeah. So it, it depends on a few things. So it's going to depend on like when we're working broadly, it depends on someone's credentials, where they're practicing and what their niche is, frankly, because some niches have more predictable outcomes uh, than others. What I really uh, like to do, if we're just talking about things high level, where we can package things out, I like to package things out. The more you move people through a program, the easier it's going to be for you to predictably understand uh, how much access people are going to uh, are going to need. Um, so the discovery phase that we talked about, I typically have one price and I have one fee for that. When we start to then move into care, I have, and I'll talk about this in the program, those first four visits, I tend to price those higher. Those are the next highest risk touch points that we have with a patient. Then we all kind of know how each other works and we can move through things a little bit more systematically. So I can package out discovery. I can package out those first four visits and give them a different name. And you'll see in the slides that we send you that we actually name those first four appointments differently. We name appointments not after time, but after their function. Um, and then we get into these more like follow-up predictable appointments. So I would over-index a little bit how much uh, your patients are going to need. And then I would build a business case. So I typically do six visits per pillar. I'm making this up. I typically do six visits per pillar. Um, but if we need 12, decide how you want to address that. If you have such a high ticket offer that you like, you've covered the cost and no problem, I'll, I'll see you until we get you closer. That's one pricing strategy. Another one is you get six visits included in your package. If we need more, then we can just charge you one off until you're ready to move on to the next pillar. So there's lots of different ways that we could look at doing it. I really encourage you to build the clinical plan you want people to move through first, and then we can put the financial piece on top of it. Um, Devin has a question about joining your program. Do we get touch points with you or someone on your team while we work through the modules, or is it all on our own and self-paced? Yeah, this particular program is all on your own and self-paced. Um, I will share that one of the things that we uh, will be releasing in the next few weeks for people who are in our signature care system is an opportunity for them to be able to join us in more of a community environment with more uh, coaching. Uh, we've moved a lot of people through signature care and the way that we've set up this particular program. Uh, it's, it's really easy to work through and implement uh, on your own. However, if we had a cohort of people who were like, listen, we need some support on this, it's it would be easy for me to set up a bonus call where we can uh where we can do that. So if we've got a bunch of you from Margaret's group who are like, we're gonna move through signature care, great. I will set up a coaching call and then we'll make sure that we move you guys through that. So like how we get you to an outcome, just like you guys with patients, is really critical for us. So uh we won't leave you hanging on that. Awesome. Ishbel asks, she says, uh, I'm just about finished building up my programs for clients to ladder up, but I'm finding that there are areas of my programs that could use refining. Do you think that your program would be a good fit? Um, I don't know, Isabel, Ishbel, I was, I'd be curious a little bit about uh, where they are. Like, I would just, I would just need a little bit more detail on that piece, which is again, making me regret that we don't have this set up as a meeting and you can talk through that, uh, talk through that piece. Um, but Ishbel, if you wanted to send me uh, an email with a little bit more context, I can send you back a loom and I'll be really honest about whether or not we can support you or not. And if Haley's still here and wants to draw my email address into the chat, that would be amazing. But I'm going to the soccer game tonight, so I'll have to get back to you tomorrow. Awesome. 
I think it looks like we have one last question. When do people provide information on their signature care system? Do they market it on social media, provide it on their website, or provide it when they sign up for one-on-one or all of the above? Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. I'm Dr. Megan, and I am the creator of the Blankety Blank System. Every time you introduce yourself, every time you're on social media, be like, oh, we talk about this. One of the things I'm working through with my patients who are part of my Blankety Blank signature system is this. When you're going live, I had a question with one of the people who is in my signature system program. I'd be talking about your signature system and I'd be using that language everywhere all the time because it's kind of like an author, right? When someone comes in and they're speaking, they're like, and the best selling author, you're like, well, that's a big deal. Like they're they're the best selling author. You don't even like maybe in their like local bookstore, right? Like who knows? But you're immediately like leaning in and slightly curious, right? So I would be very consistent in putting that uh, all over the place. Wonderful. So many nuggets in here. Thank you so much. Um, this has been invaluable. I know I know everyone got so much. Um, I guess replay is coming out. Um, I'm assuming soon, given that we this we have a date of October 4th. So keep your eyes peeled. Replay, replay tomorrow. tomorrow. Brilliant. Yeah, we're on Thank it. Also, we're much. on it. Yeah, we'll get all of those pieces to you as quickly as possible. If anyone is missing their uh, their handout, uh, they can reach out to us. I would check your junk folder first because it's quite possible uh, that it is uh, sitting in there. Well, thank you so much. Enjoy the soccer game. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. I so appreciate. Uh, I so appreciate hanging out with all of you. Thank you, Margaret. Have a wonderful night, everybody. Take care. 